Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com. And in this video, we are going to look at the new XLOOKUP function of Excel. Microsoft have recently released this function and it is the replacement for VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. Now for the not so good news, at the moment, this is only available to Office Insiders. I will provide a link in the description of this video so that you can sign up as an insider if you're interested. Anybody can do it. But at the moment, it's only available to those insiders and not rolled out uh, generally as yet. But in this video, we will see multiple examples to demonstrate that why and how XLOOKUP is going to be the successor to VLOOKUP. So I'm going to start with the classic VLOOKUP scenario. I have these IDs in column A and I want to return the department from the lookup table to the right. So in cell B2, I'm going to begin by starting up this XLOOKUP. Now notice that it prompts for five arguments, but only the first three are necessary. The square brackets around the last two indicate they're optional. We need to provide a lookup value, a lookup array, and a return array. The lookup value, what you're looking for, for us is cell A2, the ID. Comma, lookup array. Now this is interesting straight away we can just select the range that we're looking in. So for me, it's E2 to E8. These examples are just using different tables in the same sheet, but this could easily be a range format as a table, could be a, a named range, could be a different workbook. It's E2 to E8 for me. The interesting thing though, is that it's not a table array. VLOOKUP gets you to select an entire table of columns. Here it's just a range. Comma, the return a range is a similar scenario. We can just select a range. VLOOKUP prompts you for column index number. And there's some pretty cool things about that. But when people are learning it especially, it really twists their head that you have to enter some kind of number, such as five, and find some clever way around it. There's a lot of advantages to the fact that we can just select a range right now. I can then just close bracket and run that because XLOOKUP defaults to the exact match, which I think is what the X stands for. VLOOKUP doesn't, it's always a little bit weird when people start that it doesn't default to that. XLOOKUP does, so if I press enter and I copy this formula down, as easy as that, XLOOKUP is returning the department for each of those IDs. Much simpler than VLOOKUP. Defaults to exact match, does not prompt you for a column index number, and you don't have to select an entire table where you're limited to only searching in the leftmost column. Now, something really cool here is that if I insert a new column in between E and F, it does not break XLOOKUP because XLOOKUP does not require that column index number, so VLOOKUP is vulnerable in that aspect. With XLOOKUP, look at the formula, that return array is just going to adjust itself. So that's pretty cool. Okay, let's look at another advantage of XLOOKUP. Here, we want to return information to the left of the lookup column, something we know VLOOKUP can't really do. I want to look for an ID and return a name. So let's start the XLOOKUP here. Once again, I'm looking for the ID, A2. The lookup array, that's the IDs again, column E. Then the return array. Well, this time it's column D. This is a range to the left of the one we're searching in. VLOOKUP can't do that. It looks down the leftmost column, counts across that index number. 
Here, extremely versatile, just like the index match combination is famed for. But XLOOKUP can do this too. I press enter and I'm returning names from the left of the lookup range. Now performing exact matches is a far more common use of lookup formulas. But another really awesome example is performing range lookups. And in this example, I have some totals in column B that were spent and over in the table in E and F, I want to return the discount that they have earned from spending that much money. So looking within a range, I have to find where 722 falls within the ranges. So X look up in cell C2. And the lookup value is the amount spent in B2. The lookup array is to look in these ranges in E3 to E7. The return array are the discounts in the column to its right, F3 to F7. And this time I'm using a comma to investigate match mode. The fourth argument, it's optional. It defaults to exact match, but this time we are performing an approximate match or a range lookup. And we want the second option, minus one, to do an exact match or next smaller item. So 722 would return the amount in between 500 and 750. See that we also have the option for the next larger item. Now that is something you do not get with VLOOKUP. It's always less than. And yes, that's what we want right now. But having extra options, more than VLOOKUP can offer. We also have the wildcard character match. VLOOKUP defaults to allowing you to use wildcards. Here we have to switch it on, which you can see is number two. Anyway, we're going for next smaller item minus one closing bracket and pressing enter and here we have it doing its job now we do notice i have an error in cell c7 though and that is because they've spent 64 and there is nothing catered for that in the lookup table it starts from 100 so let's look at adding this so if i put it at the bottom that zero would give 0% discount, no discount if it's under 100. Notice now that the range in column E is not in order, because zero is at the bottom. Now VLOOKUP cannot handle it if it's not in order and doing range lookups. But let me go back to the X lookup, and let's expand the two areas for the lookup array and the return array, and we'll run that again and look at this. The order is not important. Yes, it might make sense to put those in order for people who are looking at it, but it's not a requirement with XLOOKUP in the way that it used to be with VLOOKUP. Some more fantastic advantages for XLOOKUP there. More options when doing approximate matches and the order is not important. So I've spoken a lot about VLOOKUP, but I did mention that the XLOOKUP function is here to replace HLOOKUP as well. So let's see an example of that. In cell B2, I want to return the sales amount from row five for Helen. So let's begin XLOOKUP, and the lookup value this time is the name of Helen. Comma, the lookup array is going to be in this range of names. So this is now horizontal, this is a row. So we would require HLOOKUP in this example, selecting the whole table where the first row is the one to look in. Here though with the XLOOKUP, just specify that range wherever it is. Comma, the return array is the array of numbers underneath it. I'll fix that. I'm doing an exact match 
so I don't need any match mode or anything else. Close the bracket, press enter, 203 for Helen. And there is XLOOKUP replacing HLOOKUP. Now for my final example of XLOOKUP. We are going to see it perform a bottom up match. I want to find the last occurrence of a ID in this list. I want the IDs in column A, we can see they're listed down column E, but they're duplicated because the stock is checked multiple times and I want the most recent stock check. So cell B2, let's begin X lookup. Lookup value, the ID, comma. Lookup array, the array of IDs, comma, return array, the array of stock, comma, match mode, not interested because I want an exact match. So I could specify that with zero, that's all well and good. I could also just put a comma and move on and ignore it. And we're going to use minus one. I want a last to first match. This is awesome. You don't get this with VLOOKUP. It's top down and that's all you get. And normally that's what you want. But here we are doing bottom to top, last match. So in this list, I now have the stock of the last time 5637 was checked and it was six or 00726 was checked and that was 30. Pretty awesome use of how much more XLOOKUP is going to offer us than what VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP currently can. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.